Hello viewers and welcome to my blog then for the Chinese Grand Prix 2013. It's amazing this year that it's 10 years that we've been going to China. You know, when they mentioned that on the TV a few days ago, I, I, I thought, is it really? The time's absolutely flown. And uh, Martin Whitmarsh pointed out that, you know, you couldn't see anything but fields. And when you look at it back then, it was just fields as far as the eye could see. And now you see the, the city encroaching. It just shows the incredible amount of building work that's been going on over there. I remember back at the time as well, the revolutionary maglev train uh, was this sort of hover train, if you like, that used magnetic energy to take people from the city miles away and travel at incredible speeds. That was that was the highlight. And of course, in a few years' time, the city will have engulfed that entire region. All that all that completely changed. There is an incredible amount of growth in China that we see. But onto the racing, um, Mercedes very strong uh, in qualifying. Uh, Lewis, of course, getting pole position. Great for him to get that pole position under his belt. I'm sure there's been a lot of pressure on him and the team to get these results, to get these podiums and to get these early results and really get the car reliable and finishing towards the front. Good lap, of course, from Kimi Raikkonen, keeping his nose in there. We know he's a strong racer. He's got a good car uh, in, and good race setup as well that he's demonstrated throughout last year. And, of course, this year he's clearly got off to a much better start, plus the fast-starting Ferrari of Fernando Alonso. A few people were unhappy with the qualifying. Uh, obviously, you had best part of half an hour when there was no cars on the track well, I say best part of half an hour, 10 minutes here and 10 minutes there, but it, it really wasn't the qualifying session that everybody had hoped for, especially for the crowd that turned up to see the cars perform. But there was strategy involved. You know, obviously Jensen doing his two-minute lap, uh, Vettel not setting a lap along with Hulkenberg in the top 10. I thought that the rule was that the car still had to go out. Um, that, that happened a couple of years ago. I think Michael Schumacher did it, went out and went in. They brought in a rule, you had to go out. And clearly they've changed that rule, and I've not heard since that rule was changed. But it wasn't mentioned. They got away with it, and, and the, the, the start of the race was thus. So, of course, we had uh, Mark Webber with his bad luck on fuel. Surprise, surprise. You know, uh, I know the Red Bull will say, well, these things happen, but you can't help but be a bit cynical when you see things like that because it never seems to happen the other way around. And people will point out, ah, oh, but it happened to Sebastian Vettel in Abu Dhabi. Well, actually, it didn't. It happened in the final qualified part of qualifying uh, and he'd already set a representative time but either way there's no point bickering about it started from the back of the grid and he had to work his way up so uh, a good start then for um obviously lewis getting getting a great start uh, we had um alonso in second place a poor start for kimi raikkonen got a lot of wheel spin and from there it's been a, it's been an interesting race it's been quite processional it has to be said it was waiting for everybody at first uh, for the soft tyres to go off, which they went off very quickly. And then, of course, you had Vettel and Hulkenberg, who both overtook Jensen Button. Hulkenberg showed very strong pace in the first part of the race uh, and was, in fact, leading for a while as well, once everybody had pitted. Meanwhile, Mark Webber pitted on lap one, got his soft tyre out of the way, straight onto the harder tyre. Uh, was was of course uh, gaining hand over fist on everybody and showing he had some really great speed around the track uh, a real shame for him obviously that the qualifying wasn't there for him because if he'd been in the mix he'd certainly have been looking at a win giving his pace at that point uh, of course Esteban Gutierrez as well in the in the Sauber having his crash into Satil who'd already had some contact with De Resta Silly tangles between teammates, just silly tangles all round, really. I think uh, Force India were trying too hard there, the two drivers battling against each other. Yes, you want to battle against your teammates, but it does seem to be, um, doesn't seem to be like that they're helping each other at all there. And it was, uh, could have been a silly com coming together that took them both out of the race. Of course, and we had uh, later in the race, uh, we had uh, obviously Raikkonen damaging his nose on the back of Perez. Perez was like moving about a bit in the braking zones, nothing too significant. Uh, I, you know, I, I compared a similar situation, I think, to Bruno Senna when he uh, moved in the braking zone in front of Michael Schumacher at, at Barcelona last year. But there was a little bit of jinking, but he didn't actually move off the racing line. He was still on the racing line. Uh, the incident with uh, Kimi Raikkonen. You know, uh, at the end of the day, Perez took his line he was allowed to take. Uh, Kimi was 
pushed out and had to slow down a bit. You know, he doesn't have to give Kimmy space into the corner. Uh, Kimmy needs to be alongside before they get to the corner. So it's just one of those areas, really, where you can push someone off if you have the racing line. A little bit like uh, Button and Lewis coming together at Canada that time when Button just moved across and didn't see Lewis in his mirrors. Um, now, of course, then we had Weber and Vern. Uh, obviously, incident there between two cars. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I think it was just a, a misunderstanding. Weber thought that uh, that the, the, the gap was there for him to go through. Uh, it wasn't. And of course, they, they came together and there was just a miscalculation, I think, between the two drivers. Weber ending up with a three-place grid penalty for the next race. I thought he was a bit unlucky. I thought the way that sort of lined up, I thought it was six, one and a half dozen the other, really. I thought, that, you know, the, the door was open. He went in. The door closed completely. He had nowhere to go. So there wasn't really, in terms of averting action, you know, he'd committed to that point. Had the pit stop, changed the nose, changed the tyres, and of course then one of the wheels fell off as well. Just another thing to compound Weber's difficult weekend, but at least he's still racing, and we still have that drama to look forward to in terms of where Red Bull is going this season. And it gives me lots of room for jokes in terms of stuff on the uh, VV Automotive fan page, uh, or, or Facebook page. Do get on there if you haven't already, and you'll see some of the nonsense I've been putting up on the wall today, just enjoying the uh, different action Rosberg out again another race for Rosberg he's not having much luck is he he's having a bit of Weber syndrome maybe I don't know that's that's the cynical racers out there will appreciate that one um so of course eventually Fernando Alonso uh, winning the race a, a good run from him good strong run from Ferrari Kimi second place with the damaged front nose uh, did very well given where the damage was and the airflow that would have gone in there um I was watching a Ginetta Junior race and Often the headlights get damaged and then that causes, air, causes airflow to go into the front of the car and it makes the car very difficult to drive. Or imagine the airflow into the front of that Lotus. It must have been astronomical weight uh, pushing into that hole. But either way, Kimi made it round. It was quite a firm drive from him. And Hamilton, in third place, uh, hold, you know, managed to hold up Vettel. Um, it was interesting, wasn't it? The, the, the final few laps, you suddenly had some action. And I think it just showed how sedate the race was. I think Jensen Button's race was the most measured today with his stops. He couldn't fight everybody. He had to maximise his tyres. And everybody was out there maximising their tyres, but they weren't racing. If you said to most of those drivers, did you push as hard as you could at any time? No, I just had to take care of the tyres. And so we don't end up with guys on the edge, you know, squirming out of every corner and giving it absolutely everything. Instead, we end up with a bunch of drivers who are managing the fuel, managing the tyres, not really pushing to the limit and just maximising the ability of that car and letting everybody else do what they want to do around them. And I think that there's no easy way out of this. We talked about the qualifying earlier. What can we do to improve qualifying? Perhaps a qualifying set of tyres where everyone has to push to the limit on every set. That's one way, but then you take out the strategy that you need for the start of the race. So there's definitely a, you know, a, a room for discussion here. And I think that it's something to consider in the future. But China's always been a little bit tactical like that. And the only thing that's really made it exciting has been the rain in the past. And of course, there's a dry day, high tyre degradation. I think it's, it's always going to be limited. So now we move over to Bahrain and... Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the different teams perform. Uh, McLaren, we're not expecting any improvement there. Uh, Williams, again, like them, expecting updates at Barcelona. Uh, Red Bull will be strong, as will Lotus. They were last year. Uh, Ferrari will always be strong. They've got Fernando Alonso. Uh, Massa was a bit unlucky in the pit stops today, and uh, let's hope he does get some more luck at some point. Again, he's suffering from Rosberg and Weber syndrome. Um, so it will be interesting to see if he actually gets a, a better call from the team in terms of his pit strategy and manages to do well there because he's certainly shown the pace in qualifying he's been a little bit unlucky in the race so far as well and I've been enjoying the coverage as well this year I just made a little note out to um, the BBC I think uh, Susie Perry's done a, a good job I think coming in after Jake last year I think there'd been a lot of pressure on her to do well and of course we had Eddie Jordan back today I have to admit Eddie Jordan did look a bit down in the uh, forum afterwards um, perhaps a bit drained from the traveling or perhaps there were some in jokes as well who knows and uh, uh, and you'll see as well uh, David Coulthard uh, his innuendos I, I've always find quite entertaining but uh, that's it from me for now 
on this one. Just a very quick blog this time. There wasn't lots to go over so much this time that I'll look at after the next race in Bahrain. And halfway through the season, I'll do a little roundup as well. But other than that, uh, I've been uh, recently at Silverstone, hoping to provide a report on that pretty soon. I was at the Formula E Forum, the future of motorsport. Uh, and of course, just having a quick look at the World Endurance Championship that took place this weekend. But that's it from me for now. As ever, more soon.